Hello and welcome to this week's edition of BOI Weekly. I'm Olayemi Odunuga. The Bank of Industry in 2017 commenced granting of loans to micro, small and medium entrepreneurs with the sole aim of boosting the economy and create jobs that will promote enduring wealth. These loans were disbursed through 14 microfinance banks with branches nationwide. This week, we take a break from stories of BOI's beneficiaries as we bring you details of the official launch of Asuko Hospital in Calabar, the Cross River State's capital. The State of the Art Cancer Center was built with the aim of addressing the challenges faced by cancer patients in raising funds for treatment abroad. At the official launch of the center, located at Mary Slicer Avenue in Calabar, the executive director of the center, Mr. Yegwagbo, explains that the idea is to provide affordable health care delivery to those living with the ailment, in addition to providing facilities to medical professionals who are constantly in search of standard equipment and work environments. The facility, which is said to be the first of its kind in the Niger Delta and southeast region of Nigeria, is expected to bring hope to cancer patients across the country. Welcome to the program. Welcome back. Asupo Hospital commenced operations in 2013 with the aim of making medical services affordable and accessible to all persons. The facility grew into a full-fledged hospital in 2018, and in its quest to meet the increasing healthcare demands of Nigerians and other residents, the Asupo Comprehensive Cancer Center was established as the first privately owned cancer center in the south-south region of Nigeria with world-class state-of-the-art equipment. The center offers full diagnostic services made up of medical imaging, inpatient words, surgery, blood bank, and the cancer center offering radiotherapy, brachytherapy, and chemotherapy services. Six years after the dream was conceptualized, SC Upo Comprehensive Cancer Center comes alive with the official launch of the world-class center in Calabar, the capital of Cross River State. <laughs> Top government officials, led by the Deputy Governor of Cross River State, the People's Democratic Party governorship candidate, Sandy Ono, heads of security agencies, family, friends, patrons, and well-wishers, are here to witness the epoch-making event. I've seen that this vision does not die. Please, let's give them a round of applause. The center, according to the proprietors, is a leading private cancer center in Nigeria and West Africa, utilizing equipment from top manufacturers to deliver affordable, precise, and conformal therapy to everyone in need of world-class service. <laughs> The center diagnoses and treats all types of cancer using the latest techniques and technology for radiotherapy, chemotherapy and surgery, all in one location. The center is birthed by the late General Anthony Upo, who, though a cancer survivor, lost three of his siblings to cancer. And it's a pleasure on behalf of my family. Though the center is targeted at putting smiles on the faces of patients, it will also boost medical tourism into the state, considering the fact that the state is a tourist destination. Before my father had passed, when he set up this center, when he was setting it up and we had put together everything that we needed to be able to start building, one of the things that came up was how would the average Nigerian afford treatment? It's one thing to be diagnosed with cancer, and it's another thing to be able to pay for the treatment. Um, permit me to just give you a very quick anecdote from this past weekend. We, we held a medical outreach in Yala local government in Okboma, my hometown, my father's hometown. And we were giving out free medication and free consultations to the villagers. And a couple came up to me and said that they had already actually gotten a diagnosis somewhere and they had been referred to our hospital for an ultrasound scan. And I asked them, no, they, they came to me to ask, you know, whether they could get some kind of discount on the scan. So I asked them because I, I didn't know the price. So I asked them, how much does it cost? And you know what they said to me? They said they didn't know. They were too afraid to go into the hospital in the first place because they were afraid that it was going to cost some huge amount of money. 
And I'll tell you how much it was. 4,000 Naira for that scan. And I think a lot of us here would not consider 4,000 Naira to be too much to spend on most things, much less health. And yet, these people were too afraid to go into a hospital for a procedure that was going to cost 4,000 Naira. And that's the reality of Nigeria today. So my dad, in his own foresight, when he was setting up this center, also said that we needed to have a sister organization to it, something not for profit that would be able to enable people access this healthcare that we are providing here. So that's what I'm here to talk to you about today. It's the Asiupo Cancer Assist Foundation. Its entire mission is to be able to allow indigent patients to be able to access cancer treatment at our center. Um, this is something that he had set up a board for, and of course was supposed to have gone live last year, but you know, um, we know what happened. So I thought it would be a good opportunity for us to be able to launch that. We're opening the cancer center and I think it's a great opportunity to also open, launch this not-for-profit. So this is a fundraiser. Um, we are hoping that with the this seed funding that we have now, we'll be able to give treatment to quite a number of patients who have actually come to our center but have not been able to pay for treatment. For the Chief Medical Director, Dr. Benga Kajobola, the facility is aimed at restoring hope to all parts of Nigeria and everyone in need of cancer treatment. He explains that though cancer treatment is not cheap anywhere in the world, the center is making it affordable to patients, as it is the cheapest so far anyone can think of. 2012, when the first time I uh, contacted General uh, Antonio Upo, the building was just uh, being finished to actually usher in a five-star diagnostic center here in Calabar. And little had we known that uh, we're going to metamorphose into also the first indigenous comprehensive cancer center of its kind in the south of Sahara. Um, it's very important to note that precisely on the 21st of November 2013, this building was blessed in the same way to commence activities of the uh, medical center, which was purely diagnostic. Uh, and being the first uh, medical officer, first consultant, first radiologist, first medical director of the place, I can tell you the story of how we grew. Now, it's very important that we came on board because uh, of the general's interest in how the low and poor in the community fair when they are sick. That is, we're not even talking of cancers. We're talking of ordinary medical checkup. You order for a PSA, which is for prostate uh, cancer, just for checkup, and it takes you about three weeks to get your results. And he was like, okay, if people cannot fly to Lagos and Abuja, how have they been coping? So let us start this, to bring health closer to people. But when, immediately we started, after issuing few results, the next thing was, just like Oliver Twist, what can we now do, now that you have told me I have this problem? Then we sojourned into having inpatient care and uh, outpatient department so that we can actually start treating patients. We started that successfully, and uh, from 2013, precisely May 2015, we opened our first branch at Ogoja, Igoli, where we have similar facilities and is being well used till as I'm talking to you. Now, um, come 2016 again, he said, I want to do something different this time around and we're thinking of doing a cancer center and I want to make it big, you know? And, um, you know, to uh, minds like ours and uh, we, we don't have the investment mindset or let's say I've imbibed it now. I was looking at the very rapid way Everything has moved between 2013 and 2016, and this man is still forging ahead. And I'm so happy that we are all here to see that this has gained strength and fruition, and we've been able to bring succor and smile to people that suffer different ailments and not cancer alone. 
very, very important to say. Uh, it's no longer on a sad note because um, I know he's watching us and he's quite happy that we're all here attending. Even on his uh, sick bed, he wanted to be pushed around to make sure that everything was put in order and we thank God that more than 98% of the work was done before he passed on on 6th of September last year. And even after, we got uh, good support from a very good friend, Mr. Duke Alcott, I must mention that name, he's been with us. Um, the Archbishop quietly has been offering good advice, non medical advice, papal uh, prayers, and telling us the direction to follow. And most importantly to mention is the role of our chair of TSI holding, Mrs. Sally Upo. She has been uh, a pillar to lean on in all this. And um, the community at large has been very supportive. So it's on this note, I want to welcome one of us to uh, our grounds. This is a comprehensive cancer center. First of its kind, I must say, because we have everything you need to diagnose and treat cancers on ground. And that is to say, you don't have to travel. We have the right type of staff, we have the right type of attitude, and we have equipment to make sure that we bring soccer to the um, ailing public. The Deputy Governor of the State, Professor Ivara Esu, is full of praises for the idea of Asiupo Comprehensive Cancer Center saying the investment is a legacy project of the late General Anthony Upo, who died in 2021. He commends the standard and quality of equipment at the center and pledges the support of the state government to ensure its continuous operations. And of the Holy Spirit. Amen. For me, it's uh, really very nostalgic. I mean, I know that uh, if Tony were alive, he would have taken me around this center maybe two or three days back, equipment by equipment, and he would be giving me lecture as to how they, they work, how they function. And, you know, he's not a radiologist, he's not any better, I don't know. He would know it more than the radiologist, eventually. He would have taken me machine by machine, and every equipment here, and uh, would have gone through, would have gone through how this ceremony will be, the form it will take, and so on. So um, it's so difficult that it's now with us, but I do hope that the legacies he left behind, especially this kind of giant uh, legacy would console us and will encourage us to carry on. We thank God for um, a good replacement. Mr. Yegua Upo. The way the young man has carried on in the past one year trying to get everything in place I am so consoled, I'm so happy that the vision of Tony will continue to live, will continue to be on. And for this center to be ready for this commissioning is a great testimony. I also want to thank uh, Dr. Benga. Benga, sorry, now your surname is a bit, uh, I find it difficult to pronounce it. Kaboji. Uh -huh. My wife will pronounce it better, it's your sister. So, um, so really, we are happy that you are carrying on. I have some pe persons who have already gone through treatment here. A very close friend of mine who is cu currently being treated, he's so happy that even as a medical doctor, he is undergoing some tre treatment here and he's happy with the kind of results they are getting. So that means that is how close we are, we are to the fact that the testimony of what's happening here. So we thank God and we hope and we hope that the, all the doctors and uh, the other persons who are working here will be encouraged to continue to work hard. Rosemary, 
work hard, continue the same way you have been doing before now. I'm talking about Reverend Rosemary Achongwa. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's here, yes. So please continue along with the team. Work as if Tony is still around because he is. Jaguar is standing there as a tower. He's, he's, uh, he's still growing taller. Later, he will add on that weight to make him really look like uh, his father. Some survivors share their testimonies of how they regained their health through the services provided by the hospital. Yes, yeah, something took me to be a cancer patient because after the treatment from somewhere, else, they referred me to here. I didn't know this place before now. But since I knew this place, that's very good improvement. Initially, sometime last year, I was kidnapped and shot three times in my car. So after the shooting, by God's grace, I was not dead. But eventually, I jumped out of the vehicle. That was November 6th last year. So in the process, after a period of time, around June, May, June, they, I noticed I was not talking well. I was having issues. I was not even under, remembering anything. So at that point, there was a lot of checks on my head with MRI and they discovered I was having a tumor in my brain and they were to take me outside the country. They said no, they referred me to another uh, police station at a called Memphis. In that point, I didn't know what was happening. My close doctor in Port Harcourt took me there and there was there was a this thing there the operation there brain surgery when they removed it we stayed there for about a month they discharged us and asked us to come for a checkup which we did but when we went there they discovered already cancer has affected the points. Then they now referred us to the place we have to go. That's what brought me to this place. And when I go to Port Harcourt, my doctor now wrote to them through what Memphis sent to us, the referral to this particular place. They told us we should not go any other place. They prefer here because they do very well. And I had never known this place. I had never come to Port Hac I mean, Calabar before. So, but when they brought me here, they asked me to go and wait for two weeks. But after one week, they invited me to bring all the records, initial records, where they discovered the tumors on my brain. When I brought it, they sat me down. I stayed there. They eventually took me up there and told, they gave me uh, six weeks. And by God's grace, you can see now I'm looking very okay. That's what, yes, yeah, six weeks. And the thing will be rounding up tomorrow. By tomorrow, I should be going. And I was slim that time, but now you look at me. I'm very healthy. Even the way they are seeing me in the picture, they are praising this particular place. And this thing gave a very good initiation to me. What is the initiation? That's what I received here has increased blessings to me and I will make a lot of people to know this place. Okay, I was diagnosed with breast cancer that was March 9th, 2022 this year. So I had to commence the treatment immediately 
because what the doctor said, say, we have to attack it immediately. So I commenced the treatment two days after, which was 11th, with chemotherapy. After which four courses of chemotherapy was done, I was um, asked to do mastectomy. I did mastectomy then. After that, two more courses of chemotherapy was given to me, and I was referred to go do radiotherapy. I first of all went to Enugu for my radiotherapy session, but what I met there wasn't pleasant. I didn't, the whole thing was not going well in my mind. So I had to take myself to the hospital. I got another referral letter that took me here. And it has been a wonderful experience so far. I would say it's a family. When I came, I had a lot of fears in my mind because the one thing is uh, handing yourself over to unprofessionals and you have a lot of fears. You don't know what, to, what the outcome will be. You're just in God's hands. But when I came here, I was relaxed. My mind was relaxed because I knew I was in the right hands. And it has been a wonderful experience. I have no fears. I'm calm. When it's time for my treatment, just dress up, come for my treatment, go back home with a, a free mind. Any, already you, you, you have, you've been given orientation, what to expect and what not to expect. So when you see anything different in your body, you know how to handle it. You know, there's a lot of awareness about the, the disease you are fighting and all that. For now, what I can suggest to anybody that has a serious ailment like cancer, you know, Nigeria is, you know, we don't have a good health care system. So I would suggest if you can afford it, come to ASICO, Comprehensive Cancer Center. You are in best hands. Your fears will be taken away and you'll be treated like a member of the hospital because that here they take everybody as family. They're so nice, the professional in what they're doing and you'll be fine. I will encourage the government to partner with uh, ASUPO and non-governmental organizations could also partner with them because these people are actually, I will call them God sent. They are actually saving humanity, they are saving lives, they are giving back hope to a lot of people that have lost hope. You know, the treatment of cancer is not cheap and there are a lot of lives that have been impacted but because of the fee is actually high and I don't blame them because the machines we see here doesn't look cheap. So they have to make profit. They also have to pay their staff. They have the staff must be well paid so that they'll be, be able to take care of their families and also give have in the, the mental power to give you, you give you the best care. So I encourage the non-governmental organizations and the government as well to please partner with them and give more life, give a lot of people other opportunities to have a second life. Located on Mary Slessor Avenue, Efutokondo 54281 Calabar, Asiukbo Hospital was established in 2013 to make comprehensive diagnostics and medical services affordable, readily available, and easily accessible to Nigerians, especially those residing within the south-south and southeast geographical zone of the country. Asiukbo Hospitals operate a diagnostic center, internal general medicine, a well-equipped operating theater, anti- and postnatal services, blood bank services, screening, cross-matching, fresh frozen plasma, platelet concentration, and so on. An oncology center known as Asiukbo Comprehensive Cancer Center. Asiukbo Hospitals is equipped with state-of-the-art equipment including MRI, multi-slice computerized tomography scan, digital x-ray, digital mammograph, 4D color Doppler ultrasound, echocardiography, ECG, cardiac stress test, dialysis, and endoscopy. In addition, over 3,500 investigations can be carried out with top-of-the-range bi-directional and largely automated equipment covering biochemistry, immunology, flow cytometry, histopathology, hematology, and microbiology. Asukbo Oncology Center is the premier cancer treatment center in Nigeria and West Africa, utilizing the best equipment available from top manufacturers worldwide. The hospital treats all forms of cancer using a wide range of the latest techniques and technologies which is developed for radiotherapy, brachytherapy, chemotherapy and CT simulation for planning procedures. And here is where we draw the curtain on this week's episode of BOI Weekly. 
Don't forget, the Bank of Industry continues to provide interventions for various industries to thrive, and there is absolutely more where that is coming from. So as an entrepreneur, if you need support to grow your business, you can reach out to any of the branches of the bank closest to you, or you can log on to their website at boi.ng. You can also follow the bank on all social media platforms as displayed on your screen. Until next time, I'm Olayemi Udunuga. Thanks for watching.